We 3D printed a vehicle which holds a Raspberry Pi 4, Arduino, and a $5 USB camera that is capable of following a lane and reacting to signs. This project demonstrates a real-time object detection network, a web server, and a lane detection system all simultaneously running on a $35 Raspberry Pi computer. Everything starts with the server on the Raspberry Pi. On the server, we have a website that allows us to monitor the vehicle from a client device. At the top, we have an FPV live stream. Here, we can examine the internals of our image processing system. We are also logging various system statistics like load, temperature, and memory. Thanks to our custom designed power supply, we can also view power usage and battery voltage and current. The server is also responsible for starting the automation system. The automation system begins in code with a frame subject, which is a simple object that captures images, or as we will call them frames, continuously from the camera. We have two models which take a copy of each frame, the lane model and the sign detection model. Since these models are both computationally expensive, we set them up to process the frames from the frame subject in their own thread. This ensures that other parts of our application are not slowed down by these models. It is important to note that these models are fully independent from each other, that is, one model does not affect the result of the other. The goal of the lane model is to detect a lane and to find the error between the vehicle's trajectory and the center of the lane. As the vehicle is driving, we will try to minimize this error by steering the vehicle accordingly. First, we need to detect the lane lines. The incoming frame is in RGB format. The RGB channels are highly sensitive to changes in light, meaning that slight changes in environmental lighting will change our model's ability to detect lane lines. As an antidote, we convert the frame to the LAB color space. The LAB color space separates the luminosity of the frame into its own channel, so the other two channels, which represent color, are less susceptible to changes in light. This allows us to tune our model to look for a specific color that is mostly independent from lighting conditions. We are using blue painter's tape as lane lines, so we pass the LAB frame into a masking operation which creates a black and white frame, where the lane lines are masked out as black and the background is white. The masked frame typically has noise. We use a median blur to reduce the noise. Median blur slides a small window across the frame and for each pixel, replaces it with the median of the pixel intensities for the window. Canny edge detection is done next, yielding edge features by looking for significant gradients in pixel intensity. Additionally, we know where in the frame the lane should be, so we simply ignore everything outside of the region that should contain the lane. This reduces the number of edge features which are not part of the lane and parts of the lane which are not important yet. Furthermore, we get line segments using the Huff line transform which returns the endpoint coordinates of edges that are specifically straight lines. We need to get only two lines to represent the lane, so we separate all segments with bottom Y intercepts on the left side of the frame from those on the right side of the frame. Then we average the two groups of segments to get the left and right lane lines. When two lines are detected, the error between the vehicle's trajectory and the lane we currently define as the difference between the angle of the bottom Y intercept of the left and right lanes from the center of the frame. In our case, a positive error means the vehicle needs to steer left, and a negative error means the vehicle needs to steer right. If one or no lines are detected, we use a state machine which estimates the error accordingly. Now let's talk about the sign detection model. The incoming frame from the frame subject is first formatted for our sign detection neural network. We are using Yellow V3, a real-time object detection system. In order to obtain a network model capable of running on the CPU of a Raspberry Pi, we needed to use a small version of Yellow V3. The Yellow V3 tiny PRN configuration yields the greatest frames per second with a reasonable mean average precision. We trained our Yellow V3 network using images that contain any number of signs. We obtain a mean average precision on the validation set of around 10%. However, more specifically, the average precision for easy to classify signs, such as stop signs and yield signs, was much higher than signs which had few training images and signs that relied on textual classification, such as speed limits. On the Raspberry Pi, the Yolo V3 network operates at around one frame per second. The network outputs predictions that include the name of the predicted sign and the bounding box, which provides the location of the sign. We pass this output through a non-max suppression algorithm to potentially reduce the number of overlapping predictions. This is all we need from our sign detection model. The predictions are now sent to the vehicle control model. 
The vehicle control model contains the decision making for controlling the vehicle. We use the lane error we got from the lane model to proportionally control the steering and driving. The signs we get from our sign detection model are pushed to a queue and handled by the drive controller. Currently, we are only reacting to stop signs. If a stop sign is detected, the drive controller outputs a drive value, which stops the vehicle. The final drive and steering values, determined by the drive and steering controllers, are sent over I2C to the Arduino, which maps the values to a pulse width to control the steering servo and the electronic speed controller for the drive motor.